Right, another day of fucking with the Volvo. And hopefully, hopefully, this time I sort the fueling out. As you've probably seen, I've had various nightmares with it just always running lean, no matter what chip is used, even though it's a chip that's suited supposedly to the exact spec I've got and has been in another car and has been fine. It hasn't been on this car. So, yeah, I don't know. There's a couple of options. It would have been that even though the math sensor is playing up and I'm fairly certain the math sensor is fine because I changed it for another one and that fixed a lot of the problems. Or there's something wrong with the injectors and they're partially blocked or something because it's just not flown enough considering the chip and the whole thing is the spec. It was in a different car and running perfectly fine. So, um, yeah, I got an idea. First thing I've done is I've removed the math just over there. I'm just gonna give it another clean. Um, it looks perfectly clean, but fuck it, why not? Um, I've turned the fuel pressure down from just over four bar static down to three bar. And that's because, as you might be able to see, depending on the lights, it's put, shine a bit of light on it. Yeah, the injectors are out. And that is because they're down here. That's the rail. These are the original ones. These blue ones here. That's the, well they're not original, they're the ones that were in the car. Um, Astra VXR ones. I think they're like uh, 470, 470cc or something at three bar. 550cc or something at four bar. I was running it just over four bar. And that's what the chip and everything in the car was written for. And there's been in another car, fine. But not having it in this. They are, as far as I can see, genuine Bosch ones. But I can only presume they're partially blocked or something. I don't know. So, I had a look around and a think. And then I bought these. These are... Um, Siemens Decca, I think they're six, they're rated at 620cc at three bar. So these are were about 575 or so at the just over four bar I was running them. This is only slightly more at a lower pressure and they're direct fit, everything lengthwise, plug wise, everything's the same. So in my mind at least, I reckon these, uh, maybe three bar, maybe more than three bar, will be as good as these, but will have the right fuel in, you know, with a few tweaks of the fuel pressure or whatever. I can't be 100% sure, but in my mind and knowing how fuel injectors and fuel systems work, this is probably gonna work. And if not, these injectors are all good anyway because they're shit hot ones that I could use with an aftermarket ECU, which is probably my next step if this doesn't work, just because I'm fucking all out of options. Um, I really don't want to go to an aftermarket ECU purely because of the pissing about wiring it in, getting it mapped, all that kind of crap. I'd just rather drive the bloody thing. But, you know. It's, uh, it's took months so far of fanning around with different sensors and this that the other to, uh, you know, diagnose what is or isn't wrong with it. So, in hindsight, I don't just went to an aftermarket EC in the first place. But anyway, um, that's the rail. So I'm just going to pop them in now and uh, place them in the car and uh, say a little prayer and see how we go. again it goes lean so I think it's got to be in the math sensor now even though I just cleaned it because if it's lean as rich as fuck now it's like it's reading okay but then as soon as it's on boost it's not reading enough and it goes mental lean
bollocks. So yeah, it's probably, probably the math, probably. Annoying because, um, well, I changed it for the one that was certainly faulty and this seemed like a known good one, but no, guess not. Also, the problem is these French maths are, if you get a genuine one, as rare as rocking or shit, or you can modify a two inch one to fit in a three inch housing. And that's way more trouble than it, than you'd imagine. Most maths, you can just unbolt the sensor. This one is a cunt. It's hard to explain, but yes, it's not great. I've got two options now, really. It's a uh, gold of a new math, which will be no necessarily easy task at the moment, or fuck it all off and put the Motec on it. And to be fair, I have got that Motec M4 Pro kicking around at home. And obviously that would make things a lot more spicy. And I wish I had done that when I just fucking bought the car. Well, and in fact, I wish I wouldn't have bought it in the first place if I know it would be this much grief. But it might be the way forward. Okay, um, this is my happy face. Um, basically, I was fucking wrong while I was a dickhead. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not adverse to admitting mistakes and you can pretty much disregard that rant I made a bit earlier when it was running nines all the time and then really lean on boost and didn't make sense and it was, oh, it must have been the math and, oh, you know, all this shit. Nope. It was me being a dickhead was that last bit. i show you. Wow. Anyone want to make any guesses before I show you what it, the thing was? Wow. Like a knobhead. I left the mass sensor unplugged. So yeah, that's why it was running nines and then stupidly lean on boost because it just went to its generic map, which obviously too much fuel at idle and fuck all on boost. So now with it plugged in and the fuel pressure reset to three bar, um, it's now sort of low tens on boost which is a bit rich but i could turn down it's not ridiculously rich it's safe not a blow up and like high 12s and 13s like it was and i could probably just turn down the base fuel pressure a bit more now it's three bar static at the moment maybe two and a half i don't know but either way it runs a fuck sight better than it did, has ever ran so i'm not a stupid wow well, not stupid because i've been very stupid for that but my uh my suspicions were correct and i wish i'd have just listened to myself rather than other people in the first place because uh this would have happened a lot sooner but my suspicions of it being the injectors some an issue and then running these bigger ones at less pressure my suspicion was that was would work and fuck me it has shame this has taken uh over three months fucking about to uh get to this point but light at the end of the tunnel unfortunately we're at this time where corona is running wild and it kind of limits what you can get and what you can do because although we're not in proper lockdown or anything it's uh it ain't far off Thankfully, this is my job, so uh, I've got no choice but to do it to some extent. But I can't take the piss. But, yeah. Works. Woohoo. Fucking hell, I can't believe it. <laughs>
uh, saga, to say the fucking least, just about getting it working properly, when I had no intention of making this a big project at all. This was literally meant to be a bit of ready done fun. And this has been dragging on like fuck with various videos and whatever. I thought I'd do you a quick sort of recap to explain what the fucking situation was because a lot of people have got the wrong idea about the you know what this is all about and the problems and even why I'm doing it and you know I I get the impression some people think I'm fucking milking it but no believe me it's not so basically start November um a good mate of mine who's got a big power FDRX7 basically said to me he wanted to learn to be able to handle a rear wheel drive car properly because with a big power RX7, if you don't know, you know, basically how to handle it when the shit goes wrong, and most people don't, even if they think they do, um, you're fucked. So most people don't drive their shit hard, or they do and they crash it. Best way of learning to be able to handle a rear wheel drive car when things go wrong is to learn to drift. You know, you don't have to be amazing. You just need to, you know, get your skills. Honestly, drifting has saved me so many times in cars on the road because I know what to do. Whereas most people, when shit goes wrong, they just panic and flail around and hope for the best. As much as people think they're shit up drivers and give it large on fucking the internet about how good they are, most people can't drive for shit. Even if they do track days and whatever, most people suck ball. So... You know, it's just one of them. And my mate knew that and was like, I'll tell you what, why don't we go sort of halves on a, you know, cheap drift car and you can use it most of the time. But the one thing is you got to teach me to drift. And I was like, yeah, sound. And um, we was looking at various options and this Volvo came up and it looked fucking perfect and it was a good price. So we drove up there and had a look and bought it basically the owner is he's sound as fuck to be fair he's real enthusiast the kind of modifications done all very sort of clever as in well thought out you know it it didn't really ring any alarm bells at all it was you know rough and ready drift car but you know wow x drift car he'd not used it for drifting in quite a long time it still had a it had an open diff that he'd replaced the welder with you know, it was it become his daily for a bit. But anyway, um, yeah, I took it for a test drive. All seemed really good. Um, stupidly, I didn't look at the AFRs on the test drive, but it felt fine. And um, yeah, bought it. It was on the way home, even though again it felt absolutely fine. When I realised the AFRs were pretty lean for. You know, a turbo car running 20 odd PSI boost. Um, and that's when the kind of nightmares began. I mean, the old plan when we bought it was I was going to change the bucket seats to some better ones. Get some fucking shitty Cobra Monaco's in, which I did. It was to weld the diff, which I did. It's already got a great suspension set up and all that. So I had no intention of touching that. But I then have wasted, I mean, literally, that was it. It was going to be like a week's worth of tinkering and then fucking ramp the shit out of it on drift days and whatever. Um, but instead, it kind of ended up, wow. It was mid-November when we bought it. It's, we're in March now. So over three months of fucking about um, it was annoying because, yes, I know turbo engines, but I don't, what I didn't know is much about these Volvos. And all I was being told by everybody was they had sort of super weird ECUs that sort of compensated for this and that and the other and did this and did that and did the other. And yeah, it was confusing as fuck. And I didn't quite believe a lot of the stuff I was told but I thought well these guys are like long-term modified Volvo turbo owners so they must be right but it just didn't sound right to me 
but I tried a few things that I thought it'd be like the obvious like I read I fit not rated fuel pump and stuff that was the obvious thing nothing so I started doing what they told me to do which was move where the math was change a million and one sensors and I didn't think it was these problems because it didn't really tally up to that exact problem but you know they know best so I thought fuck it I was I didn't have much idea and the trouble is with a standard ECU you can't look at the data login to see what's doing what and why um so I did all that and it was only you know I was doing things like one day a week at most so it was kind of slow progress you know in reality this could have been done if I was doing it full time in a couple of weeks but I was doing other things so you know this really a day or so a week on the car getting nowhere fast and being pretty frustrating it wasn't costing me any money really it cost me about like 100 quid in the sensors and it's not a bad thing to fit new sensors anyway but you know and i did things that i almost was certain it wasn't the problem you know ignition stuff when it had no fucking misfire but people were adamant i even changed the lambda sensor when i was convinced it was nothing to do with that and then find out afterwards that the fucking the chips it's running don't even run the lambda sensor. So I really wasted my time there, but nobody knew that. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fucking about and uh, getting nowhere fast. The other thing everyone's saying there was basically two ends of the story. There was the Volvo fanatics giving me all this advice, which, as well meaning as it was, was bollocks. Um, the other end of the scale was countless people going, oh, just fit an aftermarket ECU, the Volvo ECU, shit, and all this stuff. And the trouble is, I'm guessing all these people have never fit an aftermarket ECU in their lives, or have fitted one, and still haven't got the car running properly, because, yes, while it's relatively cheap to buy an aftermarket ECU, sure shit and cheap to sort out the sensors, the wiring, and most of all, the fucking mapping. And I've had some people saying, oh, yeah, but so-and-so off the whatever forum and whatever, you know, page, you know, has got a good rep for mapping. Like, off these, like, Speedwino fucking cheap ECU pages and stuff. It's like, fuck no. No offence to whoever. And maybe there are some magical mapper. But in my experience, most of, like, the pro mappers in this country, I wouldn't fucking touch your barge pole. I've been burnt by, you know supposedly some of the best mappers in the country i literally trust two or three in this country and they're not cheap and they've got a big waiting list so it seemed well it was it is fucking ridiculous overkill for what clearly was a minor problem you know literally the fueling was lean and it was not because of you know well, it was one thing, whatever the fuck it was. It was clear it was just one minor problem. It wasn't an engine problem. It wasn't the fact the ECU couldn't handle it. It was just something was wrong and it was hard to find out what. So just giving up and changing to another ECU is a bit fucking stupid. And the only advantage of the new ECU was you would be able to see the actual parameters of the sensors and the injectors and whatever and get a better idea of what the fuck was broken that was the only advantage you know so it's madness really in hindsight it took me fucking three months of fanning about i kind of wish i did start from scratch with a new ecu but that's only because it's taken so long it would still be a, a kind of a, a shitty way out of crap you know a bit of a crappy solution to a minor problem you know it's like oh i've got my arm aches i cut my fucking arm off you know it's a bit extreme to solve a little problem but it would have done it in hindsight well and in reality the problem turned out that although the sensors all of them seemed fine the only sensor was iffy and probably not iffy enough to matter, it turns out, was the math sensor. Um, all the other sensors seemed to have checked out fine, didn't cause a problem. A lot of the running issues were air leaks and stuff, which I fixed, you know, 
the air leaks because most people's cars have fucking air leaks and don't realize but i smoke tested it fixed the air leaks that fixed a lot of problems so yeah and a lot of the suggestions people had actually ended up causing more running problems than not and i it kind of pisses me off that i sort of didn't trust my own judgment a bit but whatever you know people trying out they weren't being cunts and i'm not slagging them off but i should have known better um i'm also a bit pissed off that i didn't fucking think oh i just fuck it the injectors must be clogged and honestly the reason is i ain't ever in although yes i know it happens it ain't common like genuinely in all my fucking 20 plus years of playing with cars tune cars tune turbo cars with bigger injectors aftermarket injectors i've been doing this shit for over 20 years i'm a bit fucking old now i'm like 40 anyway um yeah and all that time i've genuinely never actually had a fueling problem when it was the injectors being faulty semi-blocked i mean if they were like if they were chinese copies i would have thought of it sooner yeah as they were genuine vxr injectors i'm fairly new and i've in my head they were pretty new but maybe not um i just didn't think they would be blocked and it was only sort of um racking my brains the other day and thinking what the fuck i was thinking well well let's just rule it out by getting the injectors cleaned and then i thought to myself hang on why the fuck bother cleaning it because i'd still be at the limit of them anyway going by um what I, you know, the guy who's been supplying me the chips have um, told me from his own car. Why don't I just fit some bigger ones and run lower, lower, you know, fuel pressure? So I had a look around and found them 62 pounders and swapped them in. And apart from the complete fucking clown out when I uh, forgot to plug the math back in, it's fixed it completely. I mean, those injectors cost me 150 quid, something like that. They're not expensive. And um, and that's brand new. And I kind of can't believe. Well, I can because it was all it's guesswork without any um, way of you know data logging it and testing what's wrong. I, it's, it's annoying as fuck. But if I'd have just thought the injectors straight away, then I'd had this fixed months ago. But nobody suggested injectors apart from if they're Chinese, it may be faulty, which was my you know my exact same thought because they were genuines it just didn't occur to me or anyone else really it's fucking annoying but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes and if anything all this done is taught me that next time if i've got a similar problem and i can't work it out maybe it's for fucking injectors <laughs> they do fuck up easier than i had it in my head because this is the first time in 20 years it's been a genuine issue. But now it's sorted. So now we can actually get fucking enjoying this thing. I'm not going to do any more major modifications. I'm going to turn up the boost because it's only running like 1.2 bar, 17 PSI at the moment, which is nothing for one of these. They like boost, a lot of boost. I'm sure I go mental on it in the future, but I want to finish the turbo merc and the corolla and you know this is holding me up so i'm just gonna be using this car soon and getting on with the merc especially and then once that's done the corolla um one thing i will want to say is massive thank you to martin leaf that owns uh viking fabrications who does lots of custom bits for these uh turbo volvos because although i've had loads of fucking sketches fuck sort of advice he's been mega helpful and he actually understood my issues and luckily i had an engine on his own one that is similar spec better spec but similar same injectors same math blah 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 and he was giving me all his old chips to try because obviously these cars when you get a new um you know when you've got a new setup it needs a new chip burn basically so he, his tuner was burning him a new chip sending it him and um he was sending me his old ones because he was running 
the same injectors, same math, but a bigger turbo and stuff. So his was running a bit lean, but nowhere near as lean as mine. So by rights, especially with his bigger turbo, they should have been much richer when they went on my car, but they wasn't, they were leaner than he was having. And this kind of thing, if it wasn't for his chips, I wouldn't have known that it must have been, well, I wouldn't have been able to narrow it down because, you know, I had sort of proven what these chips would do on his car, no claims, just what they did. So I knew that they, if they was going in mine and they was leaner, something was making them leaner. And by then it was literally only could have been the injectors or this good math being faulty. And thankfully I was right in the end that it was the fucking injectors. So yeah, Martin's sort of advice and info and supplying me these fucking, his old chips has been a lifesaver. And probably best of all, some of the earlier chips that he gave me, which were a bit too lean on his, um, now with these bigger injectors, should probably be fucking perfect for mine. So while this current chip's a bit rich, I should be able to put in one of the older chips and it should be bang on at the current fuel pressure. But that I say for another video, as well as some fucking action and using this bastard thing. But um, yeah, we're all good. And um, I'm gonna go on. See you later.